very happy to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Always a pleasure. So let's see. Is that? That should work. Yes. Okay. Right. So this is a talk about a very simple model which arose in the last couple of several years and it's just kind of intensively studied during the last year. I will give you just an overview. So the model is coming from condensed matter to uh, by, by Sachdev and Kitaev, who um, understood actually that it has relevance to ADS, and Kitaev even more so basically solved it and uh, studied some properties which are relevant to black holes, like chaos, the Lapunov exponent. He didn't really publish that, so several groups have recovered his results. He just published a paper maybe two weeks ago, and that might be the, the, the published paper. So what, what I'll do is review, this, this might be a review in a way, I will review um, the solution, the large end solution, then I will address some question of what is the bulk space time and how does that work, and then the question of what is uh, the closer to the dual, what is the matter structure and gravity and some kind of three dimensional picture. It is all based in inverse order of the dates of publication, so I, I I'll discuss this latest paper which show it first and then maybe as we go to the, the previous paper. You'll see you'll see why why that is so. So let's see the model. Okay. That is because of what, the what it, it it said to it said I kept this because it said this is so complicated that there is not enough memory to write it down. Oh. 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 So, so I, I write it down, I, I just write the model to be simple. So it is an integral. These are just fermions, Majorana, in one dimension. So psi i psi j, anti commute, that, that's Majorana, and these are real delta i j. That's a commutation relation. And then the kinetic term for fermion psi psi dot time derivative. That is a kinetic term minus or, or the so-called parcel structure minus the Hamiltonian, which she was a coupling constant, and this would be a quartic coupling of fermions I, J, K, and L. This can be generalized from 4 to Q, which is still the SYK model. So, so it is just a Fermi, Fermi coupling, which is the Hamiltonian. So that is what the model is, and that's why it is advertised as a simple, sim simplest model of holography, I guess, or, or black holes. And my computer has no memory for that. So, so the one one property of the model which is little bit adds little bit further non-triviality or, or non-triviality is that the random coupling has to be averaged over in the sense of averaging the free energy and not the partition function. So it's not an integral. That basically I, I makes. Thought, you, you said the, it's a model of black holes or uh, uh, holographic. Can you say some uh, words? Uh, that, that, that's probably the goal by the end, in a way that we see. Make, we'll have to make up, make our way. In fact, that's probably the, what I. That, that's what the talk is to try to articulate that. <coughs> Hopefully, the next paper. Yeah, in a way. Yes, yeah. you would. For example, you would like to see some metric of a black hole. Maybe that would be a goal. Extracted from that Hamiltonian, which is over there. So, so in some sense, I might go halfway to that in this talk, and then it is a subject which is not finished. 
many people are studying this. Okay. So I'll be solving this problem. The, the problem was discussed. So this is a hybrid jingle with a random coupling. That's the only, otherwise you would really say this is a valid trivial model. If it was a fixed coupling, it is a fairly trivial model. So it's one dimension. This is often done by replicas. So now you average the partition function. Replicas just give another index, and that index is taken to be zero. The number of these components is capital N, and it's all about this i from 1 to n. Which we want the large n limit, solving the model in the large n limit, and then studying the, the, the gravitational coupling constant. I mean, it would be 1 over n. So that's one number we always mention. But here it is. If you uh, integrate out the random <coughs> for tensor coupling, which is very easy with the Gaussian average, then the term which was fourth order in the fermion now becomes eight. But you are integrating this in the part integral where we had time, and this now becomes by, by local time. This is just a Gaussian integral from what I had over here. This is one integral of four variables here, but when you square it, that will be two times into two time integrals, and that will be all four together eight, but the indices will be contracted. So after this integration, you certainly begin to see here you do not see any ON symmetry. After the integration, there will be an ON symmetry visible because the integ integrals are the, the sum is contracted, you will also see a little OS symmetry, which will be the replica. It will turn out that in the large N capital limit, the replicas will not play a role, and that will simplify things. So, so a couple of assumptions of how the model is solved. Uh, one is that there is no replica symmetry breaking, so you are just diagonal in the replicas. That basically gets rid of these replicas altogether in in leading large and approximation, people have justified that. And such that has justified that in looking at diagrams, and we have ch checked it also. Then, because of the structure of that action, which features already a bilocal contraction of psi t1, psi t2, and this is a feature in general for vector models. This has been studied in the last couple of years. Vector, it's called the vectorial highest spin duality. That vector models, as com that they are a poor cousin of Young Mills models, obviously. And highest spin theory is a poor cousin of, uh, poor, often neglected cousin of, of string theory, but it might have some positive features. And this vectorial duality leads to uh, duality with higher spin theory. But this, this problem is very simple because it's in one dimension. The duality with higher spin theory was studied for d equal 3 critical theories, and then it led to ADS4 higher spin theories. That was that is the classic high, vectorial higher spin duality. But in this case, we are in one dimension, which is time, and now we have this bilocal. For this bilocal, you can derive something with a large and corrective action, and you'll see for that dimension maybe some of the words that we like to identify, some kind of hydrodynamics, and in this case, this is the hydrodynamics, <coughs> this large end theory. So the large end theory, and will be in, in this action, n will be the coupling constant, and uh, this this bilocal field is some kind of a like you know density hydrodynamic value, and this is the theory we'll study. This is the theory everyone studies. So in all the references, which solve large n, this is a theory which essentially gives you the large n answer for the theory. It you can recognize it very simply. This first term is just that term in the action. The last term, which is bilocal to the fourth 
power of pi m is after you square that term, so it's very easy to see. This one term is extra. That is the sum of all diagrams, which I want to elaborate. So, so, so needless to say, this kind of transition to, to by local the effective collective theories has studied a very long time and it has been established. It, it is a faithful representation of the large end here. So you, at this point, you, if, if you have not seen it, you have to take that with so, so, so yeah. or any variance is it uh, or, or, or any variance? No, it's visible in that action. You see this action now. After the integration of the tensor coupling, this action is O n invariant. Now, it's a, you might say it's an answer that we are studying the theory in that, and it has always been for any of these ADS dualities that you always study things in the singlet sector, goes back to matrix models. I mean, you, you know. One might that, do you have to import that? Um, no, 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 no. There is maybe a larger Hilbert space where you might want to study, but obviously you will have to face up then to the tensor coupling. And indeed, there are tensor models which will, which will then have much bigger invariances, and people are studying it. So I, I forgot to mention, this is the simplest SYK model, then there are SYK-like models, then there are tensor models which have more more structure. So yes, yes. And indeed one might want to study that but this would be enough for today or to for, for what I was doing. So that's the action. <coughs> and from from then on, once you just <coughs> write down this action, everything is in a way straightforward because N becomes the coupling constant. And then you know how to solve such theories. You expand, you find a stationary point, you do perturbation, and you are able to do perturbation in 1 over n. That's what I will just summarize of what has been accomplished in that 1 over n solution of the model. A couple things to say at the outset of trying to solve it. If you look at those three terms, uh, these two terms are conformal invariant and scale, scale, also scale invariant while this term breaks scale symmetry. And we will be, we, we will, one, one is not, a, even though this looks like a simple theory, it's after all it's just two dimension. The trace log is meant in the matrix sense. This is a, the, the, the bilocal is a matrix, and the multiplication of matrices is, so that, that is why that, that word trace, so this is fairly, it's not that trivial. This term, but this term is trivial, that just the integral over t, that's the bilocal at the same time, and you take a derivative, and that term is fairly trivial, and then it has a star. How does the, uh, sorry, just a bit how, how does the conformality? So, so you will, will see that this term has scale symmetry, and in fact a bigger symmetry, mm -hmm. as an observation, while this term breaks symmetry, j is a dimension full parameter, mm -hmm. So if you scale j, it will be coming out as 1 over j. So the infrared... This oh, the scale means... I think about scale mm -hmm. psi. That's right. right. So the, the infrared fixed point will be at j for infinity. Oh, because I can... I, because in the original Lagrangian, I can, I, I can scale j and I can scale psi and keep the symmetry. So scaling j is the same as scaling psi and is it because j is in front. That's right. That's okay. right. Okay. So, so here you can easily see, and we'll see, j will come in front of this and it will disappear from from this part of the action. So, so this is the critical action. It will be the action at j, j to infinity. This is the infrared critical. This will be 1 over j after you scale j appropriately. And therefore, it will be a breaking. Is that OK? You can ask uh, a yeah. question related to noise. Right. I think his question was whether you can restrict this theory to singlet sector, or do you have to consider non-singlet? Uh, at this point, we uh, if, first of all, almost everybody restricts almost every theory to singlet sector. Yes, but it's so, a global symmetry. It's not gauged. So 
Oh, by, yeah. by restricting it to single sector, you just gauged it. Yeah, you. So, you, you know, gauging is not a prerogative of. I uh, know, we, we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, Get, oh, this it might have been gauged by someone else or gauged by you, that's the same effect. Yeah. So, when you meant by singlet sector, you meant are all the states of the theory singlets under OL? Yes. That's what you asked. Yes. Yeah. I don't think so because this evaluates any correlation function with ON invariant. Right. The intermediate states can be anything. It cannot evaluate for you anything which is not ON invariant. It cannot evaluate like psi i, psi j. It can evaluate yeah. all anything which is invariant. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's a path into the problem. So it's not a Hamiltonian? Yeah. You can do a yeah. Hamiltonian yeah. as well. But so it's not as strongly gauged as you might think? Yes. You know, it allows intermediate states. Right. Yes. Uh, intermediate but states but are all there. Yeah. Only external states are uh, uh, OLD. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But if you are interested in the partition function of whatever the non single sector right. is, this would be a good way to evaluate yeah. the partition function period, but even if states which contribute are non single. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that free energy or the, the energy of the black hole that probably has contribution from non single, mm -hmm. but this will evaluate. Mm -hmm. I, I guess what I want to clarify about the Ankhar meant is that you are not, nobody is ever interested in calculating non singlet asymptotic states in large end theories. There is no nothing nice about it. So this is quite standard large end. Yes. Okay. But yeah, yeah, I won't say anything about non single mm. asymptotic oh. states. But the non single states are in in this right. as intermediate states. Yeah. What? Oh the star, no. That because this is a matrix and then it's more appropriate to just remind me, sorry, now I, I think I covered the whole talk. Yeah, the star is just, for example, it's more relevant actually for that term, you know, log of uh, matrix. Star in the sense of a matrix product oh, for the by local, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's just go to the solution. Because I said this is scale invariant, and I probably have to speed up a little bit. It only has two terms. It is scale invariant, and it was observed by Kitai. And this is a very relevant observation for this model. And uh, as I will conclude, probably relevant in general, that you expected the infrared fixed point theory to have scale and conformal symmetry in two dimension, or one dimension, actually. But this has a much bigger symmetry. This, is a, this has a reparameterization <coughs> symmetry. And for that reparameterization symmetry, this trace log is pretty crucial. You will, you will, this is a symmetry much like the Lubin theory that you remember that is a transformation of the reparameterization. Z going to F of Z, these are like, 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 like coordinates, Z and Z bar. You can think of them likewise. And that is the theory which, you, that's the, the transformation you would have in the Lugel theory. It leaves that trace invariant. And you can see that this power is fitted here, 1 over 4, to make that term invariant, to, to leave this term invariant. So it's very easy to, to check that this is a symmetry, but uh, in a way that is something we rarely see in our studies of large n of many theories that we have, meaning it's not so easy to, you know that the dual theory has a lot of gauge symmetry, that it has gravity, it has, you know, but it's not something that is very visible in the CFT itself. This is one example. In fact, might be the only example. Unless someone brings up another one. So it's a sign of some emergent gravity which I will then comment on. Uh, let's see. The, the solution goes in a very simple way. Again, the full theory, which would have three terms, of which that is the simplest because it is linear in the field, that would only add a delta function term here. 
That is unsolvable. It's too difficult to solve, even though the equations look that simple. But the full <coughs> theory with that, that term is unsolvable. What is solvable is only that critical scaling theory, because you write on Ansatz, which is a trivial in terms of powers, and everything then will be in terms of powers. So, so that is the background. And then you just expand. This is how you would go to finite temperature and find the finite temperature free energy just by this, this, this change. But uh, at this point, let's just continue. Then we look at quadratic fluctuations, very trivial again, because you have that trace lock if you expand that to second order. And this, that's my comment that it should be treated as a matrix. This is the inverse of that matrix psi zero, which I had before. This is another inverse, obviously. Second order, small fluctuations. There are two psi zeros from that uh, quartic term right there, which came. And that's it for the critical theory. So that would be the quadratic, that would be the thing to diagonalize for quadratic fluctuation. And that's, we still see very simple things, which you might wonder what's going on. The DSL symmetry, which will play a little bit of a role already for solving the eigenvalue or the eigenstates and eigenvalues of that quadratic fluctuation, is given just by the by local two copies of d equal one. This is one copy and then another copy, and I add them up, and the total Casimir is the square. This commutes with that action, the critical action, which we are now we are now only studying the critical action. We dropped the breaking term. We'll come back to it, and I will, it will be very relevant how we come back to it. Uh, uh, let's see. In fact, that uh, quadratic kernel would be something very simple: t d t one d t two and t one minus t two. This already tells you this is something like ADS two in terms of just t plus z and t minus z. If you, that is the identification. But the eigenfunctions of that kernel can be found, again, by an ansatz, which you probably know from the fact that three-point functions, t1, t2, that should be an eigenfunction of that, that kernel. That uh, three-point function obeys some identities, I think Osborne and the uh, Dolan studied those, and many people who study conformal blocks, they like study those equations. That they are, uh, this, this, this three point function is an eigen function in the sense of T1 and T2 as a bilocal, and this works in higher dimension too. That's the eigen function of that, or they did this very passively. But this was basically pointed out or approached this way by Sena at Stanford to really make the biggest contribution to the solution of the model. But if that is the eigenfunction, and you fully transform the third leg, which is an arbitrary conform, arbitrary weight h, then you get a weight function which is like this, that you recognize this is, looks like an ADS2 type eigenfunction, e to the i omega center of mass time t1 plus t2, and this is the relative time t1 minus t2. And the function z will be interesting, but it can be found as a Fourier transform from, from just this, this three-point correlation function. OK, uh, if you Fourier transform that correlation function, you'd like to know this explicitly if it's just two Bessel functions with an interesting coefficient in between. And that is the solution of the fluctuation problem, small fluctuations. So to summarize, that is what you get. It still looks so very, very normal. Uh, just maybe one comment, the, the eigenvalue is related to mu, that scaling dimension of the solution. You have to have a complete set, that requires a little bit of discussion, and that's why you know, uh, Kitai's other paper, which he just published, is, you know, deals with SL2R, if you wonder why that paper is already here. For example, in this case, it says that the complete set of news is given by a continuum and a discrete. That, that can be seen by a potential analogy or tra transferring that 
problem in fewer potential picture. There is a potential like that, e to the minus y. There are discrete states here, and there is there are continuous states here. This is a sign already that something will be a little bit more complex than standard ABS. But now, now there is a question of, of space time. And um, for a while, it has been told that the space time is obviously ABS, because you see, I already discussed the Casimir discuss this identification, T1 plus T2, T1 minus T2, that, that Casimir of bilocal looks like the Casimir of ADS2. The eigenfunctions involve Bessel functions. And now the bilocal propagator, and this is it for, for, for those small fluctuations, is just the sum over those wave functions. This is an eigen value of that Laplacian, the quadratic kernel, and it takes this interesting form, mu cotangent mu minus one. Naively, as it had it been a simple massive field in ABS, it would be just quadratic in mu, it would be mu, mu plus one, or mu minus one. But here you already see some sign of very, very non-trivial uh, 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 set of states or spectrum. So this, 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 this denominator of the, of the propagator, it looks, looks very non-trivial. But even the wave functions are non-trivial, and they are not standard ADS wave functions. Um, there are these combinations which we agonized for a year, or others, others including Valdesena agonized for a year. What do they mean? The standard wave functions wouldn't have this term. There would be just one branch of Bessel functions, remember? And uh, not, not this strange, strange ratio in between. But those are the wave functions which solve this SYK model. Uh, ADS is a possibility, but those are strange wave functions for ADS. Uh, DS is a, actually a better bet. In two dimension, ADS2, DS2, Euclidean ADS2, they all have the same group. SO1, 2, SO2, 1. So if you wonder why people might have been confused about what the space time is, in this dimension, I, you know, based on group theory, and some of what I have been doing up to now is just group theory. You, you might not be able to guess. So you could as well, as well uh, think of this as the sitter space. And in fact, that's a better choice, that this might be the sitter space. Sorry. This way, I should have called this to be x now, not really t. And that's, as you know, the sitter time. This, this, this will be the sitter time. Okay, because in the sitter space, these wave functions actually have some meaning. In the sitter space, we, we are aware of alpha vacua, and that combination which I mentioned, if you look up uh, you know, the, the, the discussion of alpha vacua, they would have this kind of combination of vacua functions, and for a particular choice of alpha, that wave function which I wrote down, which is found in, 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 in this problem, is precisely the alpha, alpha state of the, of the sitter space. So you might think that the sitter space is better, but, but neither one is, is really the right answer. And as I said, it only, we just wrote a paper maybe a month ago, and we all lived with actually the model we saw, but we didn't know what we, what, what we saw. The impression was maybe anti the sitter, maybe the sitter, but uh, there is a very, very big problem. The very big problem is the question of I. Namely, the propagator might be fine and comparable to some the sitter propagators. It only misses by an I because the, the SYK theory I took, took to study the Euclidean case, and everyone is studying the Euclidean case. So this was the Euclidean SYK, and this is this is that, and the path integral would be just like 
you do minus sign. Well, uh, if you say this is giving me a Green's function which look uh, anti-de-sitter or de-sitter, that necessarily would come with an I, and there would be a perfect agreement with a just sitter propagator except for, for that I, uh, which looks kind of, but that agreement would persist for endpoint functions, and you would not, so, so even though people speak of about the dual, that is a mismatch. Uh, yes? <coughs> so, so what is the SYK just in the Action. Yeah, action. Uh, how do you know that this is to be the Euclidean? We chose to study the Euclidean. We chose to study. We, we decided to study Euclidean. When? When Kitaev decided to study. And I, I follow, I followed, so I, I, you know, I'm okay with it. Indeed, so that is, that is the, if you look at it, doesn't look like we used it much, except that I used my action, the, the collective action, that, that was Euclidean. There was no I. That's why I summarized it here. So that action which I derived, the effective action, there was no I there. Nevertheless, you, you solve the problem of small fluctuations, and you see a Minkowskian or Lorentzian type of solution. That was the puzzle then. So you have a puzzle. You know, you say, how, how does that happen? In, in fact, this was the puzzle for not me, but puzzle for everyone. Uh, you know, you are looking at a totally Euclidean problem, but as I said, it's not that contradictory because of the group SO21, SO12, so, okay, it's possible that we are looking at an Euclidean problem and we are observing um, things which, uh, you know, feature some properties of uh, Lorentz. Anyway, those wave functions were certainly Lorentzian wave functions, the Laplacian, the Casimir was looking like that. So that's in a way the puzzle, and that's why, yeah, that's why I said it took some, some time for this to now understand it and wonder how, how to understand this, this feature. So maybe that is my, so as I said, I divided the talk into a couple of parts. This is the part I concentrate on now. So there's this mismatch of, of R. So in a way, we have to uh, do something and end up not in Lorentzian space-time, but we have to end up in Euclidean space-time, that much I, we are sure, because of absence of I in our generative function, the partition function. And we, we, we give it a new try. This is something we did in higher dimensions, so what I am saying now is not new. We just follow some identification for bulk space-time that we have already studied in higher dimension, namely, you have the bulk space, the, the bilocal space time, which is given by, sorry, the bilocal space time, which is given by two copies, T1, the conjugate is P1, DDT1, and then the other generators, which you all recognize. And that is the SO12 <coughs> algebra. And we really want to get we expect that the bulk dual is Euclidean ADS. In Euclidean ADS, these are the generators, the same algebra as I said, that there's no contradiction between one being Euclidean, another being Minkowski, you are make further comment. So in this case, what you what, what is happening is this bilocal particle is moving, but those coordinates T1 and T2 and P1 and P2, they are not, they are not bulk coordinates at all. They are, you know, some, uh, I don't want to use the word kinematical coordinates, they are not that actually that empty, but that might be one word to, to call, they are not bulk coordinates. You have to identify the bulk coordinates. The bulk coordinates will be given by a canonical transformation uh, to, to, to this. Maybe the analogy, I, I don't know whether since 
if you like string theory, then I make an analogy. For example, in the old days of even, even newer, if you study a two-dimensional black hole of CFT, a world shift theory, or the corresponding uh, black, it is a Lugel theory. But you know that by black hole transformations, Lugel theories can be mapped into something which looks very different, a free, free scalar theory. So that is, at, at the world sheet level, that is, is mapping. You wouldn't call that free scalar the, the, the space time. It is the Lugel, which is the actual space time of the two dimensional non critical thing. But I want to emphasize imagine you stumbled upon the, the free one, then you would have to make your mapping to the space time which is Lugel. That's what happens here. What you have stumbled upon first is something where the theory is solvable, but that's not the actual space time. You will have to, this is just a problem of a dipole, not a string, so it's a much more modest problem, but nevertheless, much like the Lugel. Uh, transformation. In this case, you also have a, a canonical transformation between in phase space. So this is a canonical transformation in phase space, which will give us the new space time. And once you work that out, there will be this will be the map between old p1 plus p2, the new. This will be the new time. This this is the the, the the new z variable and the conjugate to z. So this canonical transformation is unique. It is just equating generators in the bilocal picture with generators in the Euclidean ADS picture. And that is the unique canonical transformation for this set of variables. So this maps this dipole into, into Euclidean ADS. Then, if you observe that this will be a momentum space map, really, p tau is p1 plus p2, this you would have guessed. But the second formula you would never guess, that pz is minus p1 times p2, that's where you went wrong in the first initial try of identifying the space time. And this is what the calculation gives. As I said, this is not an assumption, this is making sure that the set of gen that you, you are map mapping the generators. If you convert this to coordinate space, this gives you an interesting formula. This is the well known. This is probably the most celebrated transform of all. You know, this is the, the radon transform which I learned that there is a huge medical application. I don't know why in this bulk construction of, of these models uh, that, that same transform appears, but uh, that means we are on the same, same ground. Since this has been studied experimentally, the CAT scan is based on this transform. So, 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 okay, that, that finishes that transform. So we have to do one more transformation on those space, on to reach the real space line. This transform has the following properties. Uh, it maps the sitter into Euclidean anti the sitter. <coughs> With the sitter, I emphasize the potential picture, which was uh, minus e to the minus e to the y, that potential which, which went down. This maps uh, that potential into the opposite sign, because that's what happens in Euclidean. And I see that. So it's a very non-trivial map, physically and quantum mechanically, because it maps a potential problem with that potential, which has bound states and scattering states. It maps it into a potential which only has scattering state. The fact that that happens leads to some further non-triviality. So, but in any case, we apply this map. And we apply that map on your bilocal propagator. Uh, that uh, wave function which you had, which was strange, is the standard, now it is mapped into a standard Euclidean anti the sitter wave function. After the map, you can check that the wave function becomes the one which everyone knows. I guess the K, K mu 
the vessel of the second hand. And then we go back to this propagator. All that happens is that we have that new space time, uh, which is now Euclidean the, the sitter instead of what we thought was uh, ju just the sitter. But because of the mapping, there are some extra factors multiplying the wave functions. Those extra factors have balls that will have physical consequences. I'll, I'll mention them, them later. So there is some consequence of the map apart from the fact that it maps you into Euclidean spacetime. So this is now a conclusion. I will just, just conclude this part of the talk and then maybe go, go, go further. Uh, so, so we have identified the correct spacetime for, for this, this model. It requires this not fairly interesting further transformation with very interesting property that there are some, all endpoint functions are multiplied by lag factors. This has not, this, this was true also in the old matrix model, which was the first example of holography, because in that case we also had lag factors. Those lag factors were, had poles at the places where the 2D, the 2D string states, because the D equal to string really had only one propagating degree of freedom, which is the, the mass of tachyon, the would be tachyon. But the S matrix for that problem showed also such lag factors like this one. And the poles were, but that's why you could see that you were doing string theory. So we feel that, that this poles, these lag factors might be again telling you that you are doing with some, some, some gauge, gauge theory or gravity are probably higher spin theory. Okay. So that is the summary of that, that part. So, so, the, yes. the leg, so the leg part in this case appeared in Radon's transformation. Due to the transform. Due yeah. to the transform. It, it always did. Even in the sequel one, that, that was a transform. In fact, the Radon so, transform. Uh, even in the sequel one case, you can be interpreted as a Radon transform. Uh, you know, and me uh, derived a transform in those days. Yes. Only now I learned that what we, uh, this is the the, what we derived then is the red on transform. Ah, okay. We didn't know. Okay. So if you look at the paper, you'll see a transform. I, I learned the name now. Ah. Okay. <laughs> but I want indeed, that is an interesting fact that it is in fact a very similar same, same transform. There are two types of red on. One is a regular red on. That was the case in SQL 1. This is the so-called circular red on. You know, it's more feature squares. But the logic is the same for deriving. It's always going from that collective space, which is a bit of a mathematical space, to actual space time, which is more physical. Uh, no, uh, the parallel is very, very close. OK, let me go to second problem. And I, I, I'm not second topic, really, um, which is a totally different topic. We discussed the topic of, of the space time. And let's see. We should count time. We have uh, 16 minutes. Okay. Probably this is the only topic that I will cover, and then the third topic will be well. Uh, uh, this has to do with, the, with, with those divergences which uh, Yossip might have hinted on, that we typically have some similarities. If you look at that propagator which I discussed, and the propagator had this form schematically, those were the wave functions. This was the eigen function of that uh, Laplacian. I call it the Laplacian, even though it was just, just a non-trivial operator with non-trivial spectrum. And if you remember, this function g was that, that uh, function mu cotangent mu. If you look up where the poles are, and this formula might be familiar to you from quantum mechanics. It is one of the quantum mechanical problems finding transcendental solution to that, that's precisely what we find. The poles have, first of all, infinitely many. Only one can be found analytically, the others you will find graphically, as you remember from quantum mechanics, this equation. It says cotangent equal one over mu, or mu equals one over cotangent, so you plot it and start seeing the intersection. 
only one point is analytically visible, that is mu equal three halves. The other points have to be found back. So mu equal three halves, you remember that I said that there was that sum over discrete modes, and n equal zero is precisely that mode which corresponds to mu equal three halves. In, in that place, this uh, propagator blows up. So the answer is that that propagator here strictly doesn't exist. There is one mode in the sum, of this sum, where it blows up. That is a zero mode problem. The zero mode problem is the origin is very clear, and it happens every time your theory has a symmetry. Uh, uh, in this case, we mentioned this reparameterization symmetry. And if so, then the transformation of the solution, psi zero, by that symmetry will, lead, will produce an automatic zero item function. So the derivative, if you transform that background solution by f, this transformation, and take the derivative, you would get precisely the Bessel function j three halves. That is the, the mu equal three half zero mode, which we just covered. But, but in a way, you, you could have guessed that it will be that. So that's the consequence of the fact that your action has reparameterization symmetry, the, the background solution broke it, then you, this is, a, this is the Goldstone theorem, that there is such a mode, and uh, no wonder you found. Now, the only question is how to deal with it. Uh, to, to deal with it, there were at least two, two, two different ways. One is to just now invoke that term, which we dropped, which we not dropped, but we ignored because we could not solve the problem away from just the critical point. So you say, I will put back that term. It was, after all, maybe just a linear term, but it's uh, easier said than done. So you say, I will, that breaks the parameterization symmetry. I will put it back in and find a change from that eigenvalue of my quadratic fluctuations to, to a new eigenvalue. After this, this, as I said, sounds easy, it cannot be done analytically. And uh, it was a huge effort by Stanford and Malicena to solve it numerically. And I found a new eigenvalue. The, 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 the first order change of the eigenvalue due to that infrared breaking term. And that now makes the eigenvalue non-zero at that point. So if you like, now there is another term. That other term is now just a quantum mechanical one. It signifies a degree of freedom. That zero mode, that's the, just the, the n equal the zero mode. And it can be translated into just this quadratic, <coughs> quadratic form. This is the beginning of a nonlinear Schwarzian, which I will now, now elaborate on, because we have done this in a way differently. It's something with, with Kenta Suzuki and Yungi uh, Yun, whom I should mention very much. Uh, we have done it in the manner it was done in quantization of solitons or any brains, where, where, where the location of the brain becomes, becomes a, a dynamical variable dynamical coordinate. It is done by other pop-out tricks, which I will not elaborate. You essentially introduce a delta function saying that this will be projected out, but now f is an integration variable. And at the end, it's a very simple trick, you end up with, with the form of the original integral, which will have an integration over this, this variable. So that is how we introduce gravity, or how, we, how gravity becomes dynamical in this problem. And that, that mode is projected out. So in, in this statement, what you get is the following. The only term in the action which broke that symmetry is that one, the linear one. So if you plug in psi 0 f, you should get some function of f, because that breaks the symmetry, there's nothing value. In fact, what you get is precisely this action, which is right here, right. Okay. which is the 
famous Schwarzian, and you get it with certain coefficients which I will maybe comment on. And at this point, the, 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 the coefficient, the, the, to see that that's what you get after you plug in, is easy for the problem with q equal 2. It does, uh, those are the powers for which this is very easy. For q non equal to 2, it is very, very difficult. Okay? So this, this is the Schwarzian. Uh, I will not go into the technicalities of how that is calculated. That, for that, you should see this paper, uh, in a way, Kitara's last paper. <coughs> same, 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 same calculation. So in, in our case with Suzuki, we just evaluated all the higher order terms, which we, and then sum them up to, to get to get that Schwarzian action. So we, we evaluated them to all orders. Now uh, Schwarzian action, you probably all know the Schwarzian appears as, as an anomaly in conformal transformations in two dimensions, which nothing to do with this this problem. Maybe closer appearance. I just learned these uh, papers by uh, uh, Satoshi, which uh, have to do with uh, Hawking radiation, and in a very nice paper with uh, Birchak, and you had a collaborator also, uh, which 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 found that action, you know, in, in a very and also it's higher higher generalized. <coughs> Because again, you have to sum over higher generalization to get the Hawking radiation. So there is a beautiful appearance of that in, in physics in a way. But uh, I don't think it's related, but nevertheless, it's a similar type of a problem. So that would be the Schwarzian. And from this, you can, you can, find, you can guess that the variation is not trivial. Q is the power here in that, that potential. So I, I can now maybe summarize that um, I will have to skip all the, that we are now able to do perturbation theory around infrared point, the zero mode is projected out. You can systematically do perturbation theory, but what you have is a, co and uh, the Schwarzian also can be found from dual ADS gravity. That, that was done by Malasena Stanford and Young, that they produce the the, this action from the dual. This is the first sign of maybe what the dual is. It's some kind of, uh, at least the, 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 the gravity part that you would have guessed, is some kind of uh, Jacquel title by gravity, which gives you a, a, gives ADS2. But um, we are back to, to the full model, which now has a coupling between, we now wrote the model as a couple of theory of this Schwarzian degree of freedom, which is gravity. And uh, basically, an infinite set of matter fields. Because this is a schematic description of what that quadratic fluctuation problem led to. It led to a very non-polynomial very non-polynomial Lagrangian, because it had many solutions given by transcendental functions. So the matter uh, sector of this theory is always, the, 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 the gravity sector is simple, but the matter sector, as you could judge by this, is very complicated. It's an infinite non-polynomial action that we have at the quadratic level. So that simple problem became kind of a monster of how much information is packaged in, into, into by local. That's why it takes two times to the time. That is, I should add just one comment, because we are almost done. So I will summarize one other paper, which we wrote with Schumit. Since, since this is what we get, and maybe these masses which we had and that are given by that transcendental equation, can be understood as some kind of, from some kaluza klein compactification in x dimension, which probably everyone would probably say that, if you see an infinite sequence of, of masses in your problem. And it's just a question of working that out, uh, which we did uh, with Schumit. 
So, so the replacement is to say, look, those masses come from some Galusa Klein extra type extra dimension. That extra dimension has to give you this equation. Uh, that, in fact, is not that difficult. So we now go to three dimension. We have ADS2, well, strictly we should be Euclidean, but uh, at this point we are just solving it in the kinematical space. And Y is the extra dimension. And if you impose certain boundary conditions on that extra dimension, that basically you have a delta function, uh, you will get this equation from your knowledge of basic knowledge of quantum mechanics. And if you further study the propagator in this three dimension, and in particular, if you evaluate the propagator in this extra dimension at y equals zero, that will agree, you know, will be found with, with all the factors and there are fairly non-trivial factors here, that agrees precisely with the propagator of ADS. So from this one extra dimension, you are able to recover, recover, uh, recover the, the propagator which the ADS found. What is the meaning of this? Uh, you know, we can only speculate whether this, this extra dimension can be either sequence of higher spins, which uh, became passive, that is very non-trivial phenomena. Higher spins are always massless in other examples. This is still a critical theory. So, but the meaning of this is, 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 is speculative, but uh, this is a fact that that is how you can see You don't have to be in a sequence of higher spins with exactly the right masses. I mean, you know, this is, a, I mean, it's a very simple interpretation, just a delta function. In the That's of right. So, I mean, you know, the, it's kind of, the, the, you know, it's non -trivial. That, so there should be no controversy about this interpretation. I mean, that the only thing you might have, you have to know which mode of this extra dimension you are mm -hmm. studying. Mm -hmm. So we are saying that the y equals zero mode mm -hmm. is otherwise you might have other ideas and so on. Okay. It's more like for Java Witten. Mm -hmm. It's like for Java Witten you get the string theory answers you have to from the M theory compactification, you have to do things on one of the rates. So mm -hmm. here this y equal y prime equals zero is like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so at this point, that is that is our propagator, uh, and this is then supplied with those external lights. I'll, I'll just now conclude. So it's a simple one-dimensional model. You can study it at critical point and perturbatively away. It does feature this reparameterization symmetry, which appears in the infrared. It becomes a gauge symmetry. Yeah. Probably, as I said. Uh, one of the rare examples of getting the gauge symmetry out of CFT, so in a way you can see it as a toy, toy model of how, how, how that, that happens. And then at finite temperature, it is maybe a black hole. And it is certainly answer Ami's question of uh, you know, how do you see the black hole, except for the fact that uh, you have a finite temperature entropy, you have a finite temperature solution. I spent half of the talk to just explain the vacuum uh, solution, the Euclidean ADS, obviously the next paper I rewrite it will be the black hole metric, or if some, someone else writes it. So, so that, that obviously you would like to see coming out. But we, at this point, we, uh, we're still studying the, the, the stand, just, just the question of space time was enough to, to understand. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you go beyond large end? Beyond? Uh, yeah. Can you go? Can you go to finite end? Uh, and, uh, but we, what we you can do, you know, but like gravity, n is one over g, g is one over n. You can do perturbation theory. You can do loops. Yes, yes. The answer is yes. So that that is not difficult. Using collective field. That's right. People have done that. In other studies for other reasons. In fact, even we did it, there is a very nice comparison with higher spin theory at one loop level. If you take the trace log of that quadratic term, you will get that it is a contribution of, in three dimension, you get a beautiful agreement with uh, trace logs in higher spin theory.
So, so that is one calculation I know, which is one loop. But, but there is no obstacle in this case that, you know, vector models are easy as far as one over n is concerned. Even, even matrix models, so one matrix are easy, then other matrix models are much more difficult. But vector models are something I told 30 years ago that I didn't ever study. Mm -hmm. hmm. What, what would happen to random transformation if you include one over n correction? I don't, yeah, you see, that becomes the issue of locality, of these interactions. Mm -hmm. At this point, this packaging, you, you saw that this, this by local, packages too much information in it. It already packages many two-dimensional scalar fields. Then with that transformation, it packages external poles. So the interaction which you get for this field with the transformation is very non -local. It's not as nice. Yeah. And you might wonder if you can yeah, string theory whether that is string theory is itself to very non local interaction. String theory for CX theory is also so I, I don't don't the interaction certainly don't look local. That's the I think that is maybe a People were coming by Gross and Rosenhaus, they took a local interaction and didn't get something good. I would never expect that you should take it. Assume that there will be a local interaction. Okay? That's right. I'm like you for it. I thought there's also a matrix model of recommendation that's what they Right, right. So and that is more for that tensor model. Tensor model. Yes. Yeah. So it, you can see that it has features of matrix. That random coupling with, in fact, much more than a matrix because it is a, a tensor object. So there are these generalizations. Uh, that is that also non-local or? Oh, that's non -local? right. That's right. It, it is even more 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 ah, non-local. Okay. This really is, in a way, the simplest model. The other models are, and this one is very clearly tractable by this by local picture. The Lagrangian right now is also kind of normal. That's right. Okay. The effect, the one which they would get, in fact, some of these tensor models, the remarkable thing is they they lead to the same equation, which I was solving mentioning in the beginning. It's not totally obvious why that happens, but that, that's proven by diagrams, not by the way I derived the equation. The collective field theory for these tensor models is not known to me, but Sanjay did nice work on the invariance of the tensor model. That's the beginning of such maybe understanding of tensor models. Tensor models, Witten suggested it to avoid uh, this random coupling, which he doesn't like because of its fact that it is condensed matter physics. Uh, and made indices tensor like for the Fermi's, and then you avoid that. I'm not sure whether that's too high a price to pay for that, but I should just mention even for SYK, I emphasize the point space time was not that obvious. It, and the bulk side is actually not obvious what does that mean, and that was maybe a reason for Witten to try to avoid it because. If you ask the question, what, where, where do I meet that in the dual theory in gravity? Where do I meet the random averaging? I, I, we have not seen it, or it's a very interesting question. But, uh, so, so the, the dual is, has, has some very fundamental questions, one of them being you know, the averaging. averaging. Here we got rid of it in the leading order in large end. Well, so as far as I remember, well, so the double transformation is uh, kind of a uh, well, uh, integration of uh, different ways. That's right. That's and, right. Uh, so in that sense, it's a uh, quite non-local. That's right. Very, very non-local. Too and, well. Uh, so is that the reason why so you can get some local field theory from non-local? Well, 
by Rob, uh, by Rob Gar. Well, yeah, one would hope that that that's, that will help that to to get locality, but I'm you know at this point I I don't. don't. So the on, on the Euclidean it is two seven. So you so did you write down the, the action to describe this? Uh, it would not be nice because all I would have is my action multiplied the the, the vertices would be multiplied by this lag factor. This is the same situation as we had in 2D string, where again the collective action was multiplied. And Polchinski and Natsume had a nice <coughs> analysis. So that action was still not local, but they were able to compare it with Dilatan gravity favorably. So, so to, to then the comparison of that action was, was the one to compare with Dilatan gravity. So that, that, that was a nice comparison then. But after in C to one, somehow at large n, the collective action was local in the eigenvalue space. Uh, at strictly at large n. That's true. Uh, th this action which I wrote down is not that bad. I see. It's a, it is a bilocal action. It has a night you know, Again, string theory is also local, but in, in string space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah this yeah. this action is local in bilocal space. Meaning I guess I was asking about the cubic terms in fluctuations. That's right. They have so, some nice structure. If, if I forget about the space-time interpretation. Yeah. So that that was more not, more local. Than that. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, in this case, you have this star product. Yeah, three, you have three, this star product. Three by one. So I call that local. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll take a 15 minute break and uh, have a third talk. So this is really, really